so much for choosing to stay with us you are watching KUTV news at nine now it's very key to take a look at this matter tonight and tropical deforestation has continued at an unsustainable pace since 2014 furthermore while the political will to restore degraded land has increased efforts to implement restoration promises have been slow to gain traction now so far most restoration has taken place outside of natural forests forest lands continue to be converted to other commercial land users, indicating that the short-term profits of forest, uh, forest conversion still trump the long-term benefits of forest conservation and restoration in many land use decisions. Now recently, the Kenyan government commenced the 60 days exercise of once again evicting families and people living in the Mau forest. Police camps were set and the process is ongoing. However, this step has elicited different reactions from political leaders, religious leaders, Kenyans, and even a section of civil societies. Now some opposing the manner in which the government is conducting the exercise while others just politicizing it and some loading the efforts to reclaim the very key forest. All right, now in that same light, a lot of Kenyans have been following the Mao evictions and their concerns have been raised on why do we need this, why now, it has been uh, politicized before, is it genuine? And a lot of em environmentalists also have come, uh, you know, saying we need to revive and reclaim the forest in Kenya. You know, you and different bodies that are very concerned with the environment have also voiced their opinions on the same. Today, and in this particular uh, bulletin, I'm joined live in studio by Professor Simon M. Onyere, who is the Associate Professor, Department of Environmental Planning and Management in Kenyatta University. He's here to discuss just forests in Kenya. What are we, you know, facing? What future do we have with, you know, reclaiming the forest? and just where we had it as Kenya in terms of forestry and environment conservation. Thank you very much, Professor, for being here. It's an honor. Thank you very much for welcoming me to KUTV. It's good to have you. We've seen pieces of you, uh, of your work, and of course you always uh, talking about environment. We've seen you talk about, uh, uh, I don't know if it's geology. I hope it's geology. It matters yeah, yeah. to do with the soil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. So today, however, we I just want to bring people close home. Kenyans have been following the Mao evictions and they still don't understand that this could be more than politics because people have taken the political angle, not really realizing that this is for, you know, the future generations and it's also economical, it's also financial from a different angle that if we lose the forests, then we could also suffer economically as a country. However, I'm just going to quote um, a few, uh, you know, words by uh, one of the researchers of, a, of a, one of the works that I really like to follow. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Dr. Andrew Steer, mm -hmm. the president and CEO of the World Resource Institute, one of the researchers that you will probably be uh, relating to as we discuss. He says, in some places, the world is suffering irreversible loss of primary forests, and I think Kenya mm -hmm. is included, while elsewhere, new trees are enriching uh, rural landscapes. Now, what is clear is that we are uh, well short of meeting the Declaration's 2020 targets. I do not know if Kenyans know that there have been targets in forestry mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he's saying that uh, we must avoid irreversible losses, you know, irreversible losses of biodiversity and bring degraded land back into productivity. Today, Kenyans are asking, after losing the number of forests and what the, you know, the, the country is doing, are we even anything near to restoration? However, you would want to take over and bring us into details about how our topography looks like, what we have destroyed, what are we trying to reclaim, are we able to reclaim it, what is the forest like in, in the country? Welcome, Professor. Please just break it down for us. Thank you, Doris, for uh, those, those insights from the quotes from World Resource Institute. And uh, the, we have a dilemma in the country, mm. uh, especially when you're dealing with natural resources. And there are many types of natural resources. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, where we have lost it 
is that we don't understand the connectivity between this, uh, what we call sustainability. Sustainability has three elements. Mm -hmm. It has the resources in it, the natural resources, and then we have to visualize what are these natural resources in our country. Mm -hmm. Basically, three natural resources, the soils, where we plant our crops mm -hmm. and then eat from the soils, and then the vegetation, and the vegetation come in many forms. Yes. And in this case, the reason why we are talking about the forest, and then uh, we are talking about the water. Yes. So those are the three main natural resources, which is a creation of God, and uh, which, because of the interaction, mm -hmm. enables the earth to have uh, what we call ecosystems that support now us, the animals, and everything else. Yes. So those are the natural resources. Whatever we do depends on it. All the development processes depends on it. Society lives on it. Mm -hmm. So in sustainability, we have to connect the natural resources or the environmental resources, and then the economic development so that we are doing on it, mm -hmm. and the societal needs, the society, and how the society is organized and how they use these resources. Bearing in mind that if we deplete them or exhaust them or yeah. destroy them, we cannot live tomorrow. So that's the dilemma we have. And to help us understand this, yes. I would like to show you one of the pictures of the country, the three-dimensional model of the country, uh, image number one, All right. which really demonstrates the uh, elevations of the country, how the country is uh, configured and how it is uh, shown. All and right. if you look at the map on the, on the screen, yes. you will see that uh, we have Lake Trucana, obviously up there, we have Lake uh, 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 Victoria, and then we have the Rift Valley now cutting across to Lake Natron down there. Okay. And then we have humps on it. The humps are the high areas. And if you keenly look through, you will see that uh, there are lines which seem to radiate from the rugged area there. Yeah. Which is more illustrated in image number two. All right. So if I show you image number two, you will see that uh, the, the elevation has then been uh, modeled. Okay, still zooming into image number one. Yeah, so we can clearly see the rivers. Yeah, you, as can, well. you can see the rivers there, you can see, but in image number two, yes. which is now another elevation model, a shaded one, okay. which shows the various colors. What's important is for you to realize, uh, if we can go back to the first image. Image number two. Image number two, we haven't gone through image number two. All right, I'm sure they're working on bringing uh, closer yeah. image yeah, number so two so we can understand uh, clearly what Professor is trying to you know, take us across. Yeah. But you were talking about uh, after the rivers in the image number two, you can just explain probably they're going to bring it on screen. Yeah, in, in, uh, in the first image we saw, you saw yeah. the humps. Yes. From those humps, there are the hills of the country or the mountains of the country, which basically uh, the main ones we know is Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. the Abadeas, the Mau Ranges, the Cherengani Hills, and then part of uh, the mountain which is in Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro, and then Mount Elko. Yes. Those are the main ones Very we key. know, mm -hmm. and the main ones we have come to call the water towers of the country. And from there, all actually re uh, waters radiate from there. They flow from there into various areas. If uh, we can bring image number two to the screen, then you'll see that uh, there is a, uh, it's very important for you to understand that because the white area of that image number two yes. is where the mountain, is, is where the, it rains most. Okay. So that's where we receive the highest rainfall amount and where we get uh, precipitation in the excess of 1,000 millimeters of rainfall. All right. And then it is from here now, we actually expect a forest cover. And the reason why we've been arguing and uh, talking about protecting Mao Forest, yes. protecting Abadea Forest, protecting Mount Kenya Forest, is because the forest is very important. Why is the forest important? Because the forest catches, the, if the I rainfall. may use that simple word, yeah. catches the, water, the rainfall. As it catches the rainfall, it slows its movement down into the ground and then enables it to infiltrate into the soil and then eventually into the ground and get stored there. So if without the cover, what happens is that mm. when it rains, the water reaches the surface, finds no hindrance, and it simply flows over what we call a runoff. And this uh, then helps remove the soil. 
and you'll see in many cases in our country whenever it rains you see the rivers are red or brown exactly. or some color yes. of siltation I think for, for the layman watching or the viewer who does not understand, if someone went to school, they probably know what you, you're probably talking about, soil erosion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that the soil erosion is what makes the rivers... All, yeah, all, the all loss of soil from the land, okay. mainly cultivated land or overgrazed land, mm -hmm. is what is, that is the soil that is moved and then it reaches the rivers. So it actually also affects the rivers eventually. If you see the water then gets into the rivers and very quickly before it even uh, stops raining, the water is just moving away and running away and then you see the rivers filling up, flooding the environment mm. and you have seen this in Narok, you have seen this in uh, parts of uh, uh, Tana River, that as soon as we get rainfall in the catchment areas, now the hills and the mountain areas, then the water simply flows away. To bring this into context, I'd like to take you to image number three. All right. Uh, on image number three, you will see where Mao is located. Very important. Yeah, the, the, the Mao area is uh, then, if, if you look at that image, if the uh, people can, yeah, the image there, if you look at the Mao area there, then you will see that the, 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 the white area there runs mm. across like that. All right. And you can see the rivers flowing towards our left. And there also rivers flowing towards to our right to Lake Nakuru, mm -hmm. and the other rivers flowing towards the, the, the other lake. Okay. So this flow helps, uh, it rains, this is where we receive precipitation, and then it rains. Now if you look at the green areas, those are the forests that are left in this area. And you can see that the pockets of forests are very small. Okay. And uh, it then means that uh, whatever waters we get from here, they are not able to be held back. And therefore, when it rains, the water is not able to be retained in the catchment area. It just flows away. Mm -hmm. And uh, the loss of this water means that uh, in a longer season, we don't have a base flow in the rivers. And this is affecting the Mara ecosystem. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if you have any question in regard yes. with that. In regard to that, however, it's just good to you know, make it very clear that uh, the Mao forest, therefore, is very, very important. Extremely the number important. of rivers that are flowing to the right or to the left, I mean, it is a very key area mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, the ecosystem in the country. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of Kenyans are, are, are about to now send in questions. Remember, you can engage in this particular conversation at KUTV Kenya on Twitter and on Facebook, KUTV Kenya, because I'm sure they have concerns as we go deeper. Uh, that right now, we're just giving them an overview of how the, tro uh, the topography looks like. I'm sure, mm -hmm. Professor, you still want to give a few of the breakdowns before we go deeper into your environmentalist angle on the evictions mm. and uh, what needs to be done as we reclaim. Doris, let me remind you that uh, Mao Forest is not the only forest we have in the country. Exactly. And it's not the only forest we are concerned with. All the water towers, mm. Mount Kenya has it is forest, which has been actually cut way up to a certain elevation, almost 2,500 meters above sea level. And that means that we, have, we lost quite a while ago during the colonial period when the settlers came, they occupied a large part of, uh, oh, of Mount Kenya part, Forest. Yes. You know the Timau side actually goes all the way to almost to the moorland areas. Cultivations have been taking place there. Mm. And therefore, the northwestern, the north east, uh, eastern part of uh, Mount Kenya, we don't really get much rainfall, we don't get much water there. And the people now living in Isiolo and other parts like Wajia depends very much on the Wasunyiro River, which emanates from the southern part of uh, 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 Mount Kenya and also the Abadea ranges. And then it flows through uh, Lake Olobolosat in the Rift mm -hmm. Valley, and then it flows northwards towards Nanyuki and then to Isiolo. All right. And then gets lost somewhere in the, in the, in the drier parts of Wajia. So uh, the thing is, this particular river could actually get water from the northern part of Mount uh, Kenya, or the uh, not, not the eastern part of Mount Kenya, but this is not happening because that forest was lost before. You know, uh, Professor, you've mentioned that Ke uh, Kenya doesn't, does not only have, you know, the Mao forest. Just to mention a few other forests that have been playing a very key role in the ecosystem. The mm -hmm. Karura forest, Kakamega mm -hmm. forest, uh, you know, the Arubuko Sokoke forest. I mm -hmm. do not know if I'm mm -hmm. very clear on that. Kereita forest, Gatemayu forest. There are a lot of uh, forests out there. And of course, it comes down, also boils down. What is the role of the Mwana Inchi, even as we talk about all these things in you know, caring for the immediate, you know, forest. The government at that time banned logging. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, some people have argued that uh, as much as now, I know we'll continue with the boards, but uh, even as we continue, we'll also touch on this, uh, that uh, the government is working on not cutting trees, but is there any alternative to it? Are people planting uh, even as they stop the not cutting? You know, so th and people also said there's overpopulation. People do not have any other alternative. They need to settle. There is need to, to get food to eat. So as environmentalists also, people are questioning Yes, we need to reclaim the Mao forest, we need to claim our, reclaim our forests, but what do we do with the other, you know, with the, with the people and the fast growing population from your angle as a professor, even as we continue with the, with that's, the slides? That's interesting uh, perception from you, Doris. One thing we must remember, man cannot live without water. It is as simple as that. Mm. Three days or so of no water, you are just dead. Man cannot live without water. So it doesn't matter whether you actually need the samba to plant the crops and they get food from there. The first thing we need to remember is that uh, these foods and other resources are a creation of God based on growing yeah. and nurturing itself from the waters. So the water is the primary thing in life. And any community that is sensible enough, they should find every means of ensuring that they get clean water, mm. because there are the other issues of health matters to yes. be concerned about, mm -hmm. and they have, that they have enough of it, if not plenty of it. Okay. I'm saying so because uh, people are hungering for land. Yes. And I'd like you to bring to you some religious perception. Uh, okay. If I quote for you Psalms 24, verse 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting uh, verse, and if the viewers are listening, they can open that verse and follow it with me. It talks about that the earth is the Lord's. Okay. And everything in it, the world and the people who live in it are God's. For he founded it upon the waters of the seas and of the land. So God actually founded the earth upon the waters of the seas and the land. Mm. And it means that everything that lives there depends on the waters of the seas and the waters of the land. So the waters are very important. The waters are very important. But the verse goes further and it says, who can go to the mountain? Who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand there? And it talks as of he who has clean hands and a pure heart. If you actually live in the mountain, you need to know that it belongs to God. Mm. It's the one who put it there and it's the one who nurtures it and allows you to live there if you have clean hands and a pure heart. Why does it say so? Because if you have clean hands, you not dirtify the mountain. You will not cut down the trees. You will not right. allow the soil to erode away. And if you have a pure heart, you will care about the people downstream. Mm. So as much as we hang about the land, and about needing the land, we should not be so preoccupied about it. It's the fact that you can live in the forest, all right, but live in it and conserve it in its totality. In this totality. In its totality. To ensure that there is water coming out of it and that that water actually can serve somebody else downstream. Professor, allow me to quote uh, the late Wangari Mathai, who was an eminent Kenyan Nobel Prize uh, laureate and environmentalist. And she said, we tend to put the environment last because we think the first thing we do, uh, we need to do is eliminate poverty. But you can't reduce poverty in a vacuum. You are doing it in an environment. Now, Professor, just take us through the last two or rather slides uh, mm -hmm. so that we can see what exactly you are driving at before you, of course, also comment on uh, the reclamation generally. Yeah, if I take you to slide number six, I hope they, they get us to slide number six. Yeah. Slide number six is just a picture of uh, Mao area. All right. And okay. uh, yeah, if you look, if you look slide number six, without zooming, uh, stretching it across, you will see that uh, the pictures are four of them. Exactly. And they show the how Mao looked like in 1986. Okay. How Mao looked like in 1995 there, mm. and how Mao looked like in 2000, and how Mao looks like in 2017. Oh. If you look at the green area, you will see that there is more area, green area in uh, 1986 than it is in uh, 2000. Vividly. And a little bit improved in 2007. And, and, and yes. you can see what uh, those people have been managing the forest called the cut line 
is actually nothing else other than the boundary between Nakuru, Narok, and Bomet. That straight line you see there. And you can see that the Nakuru part of the area mm. is actually completely, almost completely depleted of vegetation so, because mm -hmm. people have settled there. Oh, exactly. There's, there's been settl settlement. There's been settlement there. And because people have settled there, they have depleted this, which you can see better in image number seven, almost the last one. Okay. If you can take us to image number seven, um, this, uh, the people working you, you on this image yeah, number you, seven, yes. number the next one, the next one will be beautiful to see. So this is just so as, yeah. you know... Uh, this, this is now the classification. All right. The classification has been done. If you look at this, you can see the amount of forest in 1985, 86. You can see the amount of forest, the green area. It's really and you can see in 2000, the green area had, had almost gone in, uh, in Mau. So the, the issue here is that do we need the forest? The answer is yes. Why? Because without it, there is no cover on the surface. And without the cover on the surface, water will never stand there. It just goes away. And it explains why mm -hmm. uh, uh, Narok, for example, every time it rains, it, fl it floods. Because exactly. the water simply... Runs, uh, runs away. Okay. And the, the water can't stand there. We are concerned about this mm. because this is affecting now uh, what we call the Mara Basin. Okay. And uh, you heard the other day, I was glad the Tanzanian government was discussing this, uh, this with us and they, they, they were very concerned and, and, and very much interested that we are conserving the 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 Mau, the Mau area yeah, the Mau and, I w and i want to show you by going to image number eight yes they can exactly. bring image number eight there uh, it shows it shows then the red the the purple kind of uh, outline yes is the outline of the catchment of the mara river the upper catchment of the mara river and you okay. can see the upper part of the mara river uh beyond the forest that is, is the bare. 2000 or in all of them this is 2000 and this is 2017. And 17, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So one image is just showing the red vegetation there mm. and the other image is a classification part of it. And you can see the rivers now running down in that area that has been de 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 defined as the catchment of the, the upper catchment of uh, Mara River. Okay. It's very important for us to realize that this upper catchment helps Mara re receive water. So long as there is a forest and water is held back, the Mara River will always have the water. But if you look at the amount of forest in that picture, which, has, uh, which is remaining, mm. is very little. So it then means that uh, what the rivers, as the rivers pass through, they are only getting a small pocket in, of, in Pomet there. And that pocket is the one perhaps held, holding some water. But that's not sufficient enough for the kind of uh, support we need in the, in, in the area. So the reason why environmentalists are backing the government, evacu uh, you know, uh, of, of course, evacuating these people is that, that the, the small part of the forest left, if it's depleted, Kenya is at risk. If it's gone, no, no not more Not just forest, Kenya. The whole... Okay, tell if, me about if, it. If... if uh, it's, we, we shouldn't even be talking about uh, forest alone. Okay. If we don't have vegetation cover in our catchment areas, there's no way the water will infiltrate into the ground. The water will simply be flowing away. And I can tell you that uh, this is a reality, yeah. and we see this in the dams that the government has constructed over the years. You know the Seven Fox dams? Exactly. Do you know why they don't, uh, every time it rains, we have enough water to run the hydropower, and every time it stops, there is no water, there and is rationing? It has something to do with the siltation or the sediments of the soil that have been deposited there over the years. Mm. And the soils are coming from the shambas. So there is no holding of this water. And we are busy constructing very many dams, but we must remember for those dams to have any water and to sustain any water, they must, the catchment must be able to supply them with water. And if the catchment can't supply them with water, then we are just doing uh, projects that mm. will last maybe four years, five years, ten years. If they go to 50 years, we are very lucky. Professor, because of, the, uh, because of time, you will allow us to, uh, of course, ask you to give us your last remarks mm -hmm. on whether Kenya is headed the right direction, if it is possible, because so far, the world is not on track to have deforestation. That is what reports say, and restore 150 million hectares by 2020. We are in 2019. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so far, where Kenya stands, as you give us your last remarks, are we on the safe side? 
we cannot be on the safe side. <laughs> we are not on the safe side. <laughs> Having seen the pictures yes. there of 2017, mm. where we were in 20, 2000, and where we are going to, I am glad the Minister for Environment has been persistent that uh, we must do something on the forest. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's the thinking is the forest that is remaining. Yes. But you see, so much has been lost. Yeah. And so much must be recovered. Nature has a way of recovering itself. Okay. You actually don't need anybody to plant or uh, do anything. All you need is that the people lessen the activities they are doing in the, uh, in the natural environment and allow this to just uh, grow by itself. Even right. the rivers we have been talking about, mm. the dirtified rivers, we don't need anybody to clean the rivers. We only need to make sure we don't deposit waste into the rivers so or on the land yes. and the earth will clean itself. Thank you very and we much. We need a very clean earth for us to live well and to live healthy. Otherwise, that's why people are suffering from many diseases. Professor, it, it is such an honor to have you in studio today. And of course, I'm sure now Kenyans have understood why it is very important that Mao Forest is reclaimed and restored. Uh, most of people thought it was politics. Now you've had the environmentalist himself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Professor Simon Onyere, Kenyatta University Associate Professor. Professor. We're looking forward to having you again in the Thank interview for a lengthy uh, interview. I'll appreciate it. Now we take another very short break. We come back with the latest in the world of sports. <laughs>